Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to Live with the Pricing Lady. I'm Janine Liston, your hostess, and this show is all about helping you do pricing better in your business. I work with small business owners to help them build the right pricing strategies, set the right prices, and close more deals so they can have profitable businesses for the long term. In today's show, we are going to talk all about profit. Now, there is a very strong link between price and profit. If you watch some of my shows before or consume some of my content, then you'll know. And for a lot of small business owners, thinking about or understanding profit is a little bit of a scary task. So today I want to help you to understand profitability better in your business. I'm also gonna share a little tool that I have uh, that you can use to play with that and understand that better. Now, as the title for the show says, profit is actually quite simple to calculate because there are only four things that are involved in that calculation. So we have price, we have volume, we have fixed costs, and we have variable costs. Let's take a look at each of those elements and what it means in your profit calculation. So price is an obvious thing because without price, you got no profit for sure, right? You have to charge people something. The price is an exchange or a representation of the value that your product or your service delivers a customer. And of course, that is you know, in large part, very often based on a person's perception of the value that they can get from a product or from a service. And part of our job uh, when we're selling what we offer is to help people to understand the value. And that's why you'll find I am so often talking about value, even though I'm the pricing lady, maybe I should change my name to the value lady. <laughs> uh, but th because there is a strong link between value, price, and then, of course, your profit. Because quite frankly, your price end up e ends up usually being the thing that drives your profitability to some extent the most, right? So there's this really strong connection between value, price, and profit. If you are good at helping people see and understand the value of what you offer, you'll be able to charge better prices and you should be able to close more deals at those higher prices, so you should be able to earn more profit. Of course, price alone is not going to determine your profitability. So the second thing that we wanna understand is we wanna make some assumptions about how much we can actually sell. Now, in a service-based business, this is usually determined in part by how much you can work. So let's say you're a coach and you do only one-to-one -one coaching sessions, then there are a fixed number of sessions that you can do in a week or in a day. I think for most coaches, depending on the type of coaching they're doing, you know, they can handle three clients a day. If they're only doing sessions that are about an hour long, maybe they can handle five or six. But again, there's a limit to what you can do. But each one of those packages that you sell, or if you work on an hourly rate, then each one of those hours that you sell, that is a unit of volume for you. So to figure out what your revenue is, you take the price times the number of units you think you can sell, and that's going to be your revenue. I know this is super exciting stuff, but stick with me through it because like I said, I have a really nice tool that you're gonna wanna check out and you can use. Uh, it's a complimentary tool. It'll be available to, be available to you and I'll show it to you in a moment. So price times volume is going to tell you what your revenue is. Now, of course, when we start a business or each year when we're thinking about what's gonna happen in our business for next year, obviously we don't know how much we're gonna sell. So we have to make assumptions, right? We have to think about how much of this can I do in a year or how many people do I think I can get to buy my product? You know, where am I going to advertise and market what my product is to try and um, give it enough awareness so that people will buy it so that enough people will buy it, right? This is seems very simple. 
Um, and it's easy to understand, but of course, making those assumptions and then making them happen is often harder than, than we think. But especially if you're a new business, you really want to think about different scenarios. You know, where can I get the most traction with my product? Where can I get the most volume for a given price? And that's what a tool like the Profit Impact Calculator is going to help you to do. Now, before we look at that, there's two more things that you need to know in order to determine your profit. The first is you have to know what your fixed costs are. Now, another term that we use for fixed costs are called operating expenses. Now, these are fancy financial terms. You can call it whatever you want, but these are the expenses that you have in your business or the costs that you have in your business that are related to operating it and they're fixed. Yeah, they don't change necessarily throughout the year or th based on how much product you produce, right? So for me, in my business as a service-based business, my marketing expenses, um, my office, the rent for my office, or my phone bill, you know, these are the types of things that are your operating or your fixed operating expenses or fixed costs. So you have to make an estimate of what those are if you're a new business. If you're a business that's been running for a while, then you'll have the experience of previous years, and then you'll add to that any things that change, like if your telephone bill gets more expensive, or if you decide to do some additional marketing, then you'll add that to the total, and those will be all your fixed costs for the year. And usually we do one lump sum for the year on fixed costs when we're doing some sort of budgeting or planning, okay? Now the fourth thing that you need to know in order to do this calculation to understand your profitability is your variable costs. Now in general, only product-based businesses will have variable costs. But that's something that you're gonna to have to double check with your bookkeeper or your accountant, whether or not that's true for your business, because sometimes they allocate things in different areas. But most service-based businesses will have no variable costs because variable costs are very much associated with producing a product. So it's the material and the labor it takes to produce a product. So say you're a bakery, you have to buy flour and you have to buy salt and you have to buy yeast, right? So those are your variable costs. Uh, whereas the oven or the kitchen, the oven that you bought or the kitchen that you rent, those would be back in your operating expenses. So hopefully you're starting to understand the difference between these two. And what happens with variable costs is we give a variable cost per product or per unit sold, right? And then we multiply that times the number of units sold to come up with our total variable costs. It's really, I can't emphasize enough that in this context, it's really very simple and we're just doing some basic math, okay? So you're just adding up all of your costs, so your fixed and new variable costs, and you're subtracting that from your price times your volume, which is your revenue, right? And hopefully your revenue is higher than your total costs. The difference between the two is your profitability, okay? So that's really, that's all there is to this topic is understanding those four things, price, volume, fixed costs, and variable costs. Those are the four pieces of information that you need. Now, hello to those of you who are joining me live. Hi, Gabby. Hi, Johan. Thanks for being here. And to the rest of you as well. If you have any questions as I'm going through this, please be sure to pop them here in the comments section and I will do my best to answer them. Now, what I wanted to do is share with you and show you the tool that I have that you can use online to do this calculation in your business. So I'm gonna to have to look at my other screen here. So I'm sorry for not looking in the camera. So you can see here, actually you can go grab this tool and you can actually start playing with it yourself if you'd like over here at janineliston.com backslash pricing minus tools, 
or dash tools. <laughs> so you can go pick that up over there um, and start seeing how this works. So you'll see here again, I repeat the important thing, which is that there's only four things that you need to know in order to make this calculation, right? Price, volume, fixed cost, variable cost. I'm going to keep repeating that so that it sinks into your skull. Okay, and what you can do with this tool, you now you can only do this with up to three products, but it will give you an idea. So if you want to test this out, take your first, your biggest um, offers or your most important products and use them as an example. So now you can just start putting in there. Let's say you have a product that you sell for 500 francs or dollars or pounds. It doesn't matter what currency as long as all the same currency. And because it's a product, let's say this product costs you 175 francs in variable costs, which is your labor and your material costs, right? And let's say your plan this next year, let's plan for next year. Your plan for next year is to sell a thousand of these, right? Why not? We can assume that. Gives you a nice big revenue number. So right here, the first thing you can see is your revenue is already calculated. So your price times your volume equals your revenue. So if you were only going to sell 100 of these, then you can see your revenue goes down to 50,000. But where's one thing missing? We only put in four of the variables. We need to also put in our fixed costs. So let's say our fixed costs for this business are going to run us about 15,000 a year. Okay, so this is a fictitious business, okay? <laughs> but once you put that in, you can see very quickly that based on these assumptions, your price, variable cost, volume, and fixed costs, you know what your revenue is and you know what your base profit is. Now let's say you have a second product that you plan to sell. And this product you sell for $200 or francs. Stop mentioning currency because it's not important here. <laughs> okay, so we say this is all in francs, okay? But this product, it actually, you don't make as much money on each unit you sell because your variable cost ratio to your price is a little bit higher, right? So let's say your variable costs here are 110 and that you plan to sell, uh, let's just say you're gonna sell 100 of those as well. Well, now you can see that your revenue has gone up quite significantly from 50 to seven, it's gone up 27, 20,000, I believe. If I did the math right here, <laughs> yes, it would have gone up 20,000. And your profit has increased from 17 to 26, so your profit went up about just shy of 10,000. So you can start to see how when you add different products in with different uh, ratio or margin between price and variable costs, how that affects. Now, let's say in this business, you also have one service product. So maybe you offer some support to go out and help people learn how to use your product and you charge 80 francs an hour for that because it's a service there's no variable costs associated with it and you're going to sell let's say you're going to sell let's say 50 of those so when you put that in there then you can see that yes your revenue goes up but so does your profit because all of that is just pure profit because there's no additional costs associated with it so this tool gives you a nice quick idea of you know, how you could earn money in your business. Now, if you're a service, purely service-based business, then your numbers might look something like this, right? So you have no variable costs, but it actually might be a little bit more expensive to run the business because maybe you pay yourself more, or you need an office location, or you travel a lot, right? So you can have different fixed costs, maybe your travel, because you travel to your customers all over the globe, and you've got to fly, maybe not these days, but usually. So here you can see, yes, you have the same revenue. And in this case, 
because you reduced your variable costs, even though you increased your fixed costs, you reduced your variable costs. So your profit has actually gone up in this example. So I hope this, my intention here, okay. Thank you, Johan, for the comment that you can only see some of the numbers. I'm not sure why that is. Um, but you can head on over to the tool if you're having trouble seeing what's going on on the screen here. Um, you can head on over to the tool and test it out for yourself. It's called the Profit Impact Calculator. Now what you have is one more thing down below, which especially for you product-based businesses is going to be super interesting. Let me put these back in here. So we said that this was 250, I think, and this was 120 maybe. So what you see down here is something that is really gonna blow a lot of your minds. So I've changed this back to a product-based business. And what we wanna do is we wanna see if I were to improve one of these profit levers. So we call these four things profit levers. If I were to improve one of them, what would that mean to the profitability of my business? So in the first example, what we do is we say, if I were to improve my prices by 1%, let's say I just raised them by 1%, if everything else remained the same, I would earn 4.4% more profit. At the same time, if instead of doing price, if I increased my volume by 1%, I could only hope to get 2.2% more volume. Now, in this case, you know, these amounts here are feel relatively small, but if you're a bigger business, this can be even, you know, tens, hundreds, or even millions of, of francs or dollars, right? So this shows you here that in reality, price is for this business the most important profit lever. Now, in a service-based business, price and volume will start to have a similar impact. Uh, but in a pro product-based business, pretty much price will always have a bigger impact on profitability than the other three levers. And when you think about this for a moment, if you stop and you think about, well, where do companies focus their efforts when profitability isn't what they shouldn't, what it should be? They tend to focus on cost reduction. Let me reduce my cost. Let me reduce my cost. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I'd like to point out is that it's at least as important to put as much effort into pricing as it is into managing your costs. And here's another really interesting thing. Let's say we lose 1% on price. Or we lose 1% or volume. We can see that each of these levers cuts your profit in the same way. So even if you're not increasing prices, you want to make sure that you're not losing or eroding your prices, that your volume isn't sliding, and you want to make sure, of course, that your costs aren't increasing too significantly. So these are the types of things that you can understand using the profit impact calculator. I will type the link for that right here into the chat so that if you want to go ahead and have a look at it, you can. Okay. So that's what I wanted to take a look at with you today. We wanted to understand the four things that you need to know in order to understand profit in your business. So now you can just sit down and take a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil or get your white, get over to your whiteboard with your dry erase pen and you can start doing the math. You can also use a very simple tool like the one that I've shown you. Today, we all, we, I was talking all about profit because in my honest opinion, profit is like the health of your body, of your business, right? So it is one of the things, the biggest indicators of health in a company is how profitable they are. Now, it doesn't mean that if you're more profitable, you're even healthy. There can be, um, you know, 
some limits to, from an ethical standpoint, what a company uh, could or should earn. And I'm sure we could have a very long debate about that. But let me put profit in another context. When a company is profitable, they can take that money, they can share it with the employees, they can share it with investors, they can give it back into the industry, they can invest it into bringing new products and services to the market. There are a lot of things that a company can do with with profitability and having the flexibility to be able to do that is really one of the main reasons to have a profitable business aside from being able to earn a living, of course, right? So you want to, as a business owner, understand profitability and understand how the decisions that you make around what you're selling, who you're offering it to, at what price you're offering it to, how those decisions are affecting your profitability. If you're offering your product or your service to a smaller market, you will sell fewer units. Now, if that market is a premium market, then you can choose to potentially have a premium price and afford to sell fewer. But if that is an economy seeking market, then you might be entering a market where it's going to be difficult for you to have a profitable business over the long term. And this tool and understanding profitability in your business will help you do that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I wanted to share with you today. I hope that you enjoyed this and understand profit. I want you to raise your hand and repeat with me the four things that you need to know to understand profit in your business. Number one is price. Number two is volume. Number three are those fixed costs. And the fourth one are your variable costs. Once you have that, you know how to calculate profit in your business. I wish you all the best. If you have questions about pricing or want to talk to me about pricing in your business, you can come on over here to janineliston.com backslash discovery call and book your slot with me so that we can discuss what you're looking to do and how I might be able to help you. I wish you a great day. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next week. Bye everyone, and as always, enjoy pricing.